Stacy Sims, and we are back with more Code Realized Guardian of Rebirth in Lupin's Route. And last time we got our first bad path on the first episode. Woo! Um, we had to, you know, so of course we're going to take his hand, because that's just stupid. I, I nod hesitantly and take his hand. Excellent. The deal is sealed. I feel a strong grip through my gloves. When I see a smiling face, I feel a warmth in my chest, like a wind blowing into my heart. Now that we're settled, we just need to wait for him. For who? You'd better watch out. He's got a weakness for cute girls like you. I'm... cute? Lupin smirks, then bows deeply. Of course, my lady. Once we arrive in London, your beauty will draw the attention of many a man. <laughs> He's not kidding! <laughs> At least five of you, and it's okay. Spacey's man harem is like, hashtag Spacey's man harem. Um, we're just going to collect it from like this game and like all the other fucking romancy games. I thought about this. I actually thought about this because I was literally thinking in my head after seeing Jermaine's route, like, oh my god, you know what? Even though... He tried to be stabby. I totally forgive him, and he gets to stay in the plushy pile. And like, I literally feel like I want little cute, adorable plushies of all of them. Cute ones, not like the little chibi ones that they have like in the end game when you see the cute little them. Those are cute, but like the Victor one's cute, but sort of almost is crossing into ventriloquist dummy territory, which scares me a little bit because ventriloquist dummies are scary. Uh, unless they're Je unless they're unless uh, unless they're Jeff Dunham characters, and then most of them are fine. Like Peanut's cool, and Walter's cool. And like, but some of some of them are creepy though. Some of them are creepy, because some ventriloquist dummy is sometimes creepy. But anyway, and like, the Van Helsing one is just angry, and he looks like he's got a little pig nose. It's not my favorite. The Saint Germain one's actually the cutest. But no, but I want like cute little like adorable plushies of all of them, and I want to just put them in a little pile if I can squeeze them. My little plushy pile. <laughs> and then I want the Amnesia Memories boys. Like, like not sh not Toma though. He can't come on the pile. Fuck him. He doesn't he doesn't even get to be He doesn't even get to be a plushie, okay? He doesn't get to be there. He doesn't. He doesn't. Cause he's a dick. And like Shin, meh, uh, I g <laughs> fine, he can be in the plushie pile, I guess, but he's not like my favorite. And like, if he wasn't there, I wouldn't cry. But like Ukio, yeah. And Ikyu, yeah. And Kent? Ugh, God, Kent, yes. Hell, even Deli and frickin' Orion, they're not like boyfriends, but they're in the plushy pile because they're adorable. They're like my little pets. They're like my house friends. They're just like my little stuffed animal. I just want to squeeze them all. They're my friends. But like, like, like Deli and Orion and Cece, they're like, because they're cute and adorable and we get to keep them. And you want to cuddle them like stuffed animals. Like that's why they're in the plushy pile. But they're not in the man harem because that's just creepy and weird. Because Deli's like a kid and Orion's like a sp spirit. And Cece's a dog. They're, like, house friends. You come hang out in my house, you can help dust. And then I got my man harem on the other side of the, in the west wing. You stay over here in the east wing, though. This is the friend zone. West wing is the man harem. And that's where all these boys go. And, and Iki. And Ukio. And Kent. Shin doesn't get to go to that one. Because he's, meh. He's too moody and bitchy. He's kind of like a moody, bratty teenager. Nah, not down with that. Plus, that's creepy. Actually, kind of what? Actually, he was in Amnesia Memories, wasn't he? He was like, well, I guess he was supposed to be in college, but like a year younger than us or whatever. But it just seemed creepy because he was like younger than us. And not that that's a bad thing, but it was just like, wait, you're making him seem like he's like 17 or something. And that's just weird. It's kind of creepy. That's all I'm saying. Also, he's really moody. Like, I'm just going to be sulky and I'm kind of going to be mean to you and call you an idiot. You know what? I'm not down with that. Back off. You and your brother can go take a hike because you suck. Like, you're moody and mean and he put me in a cage. Done with you guys. Done with this whole fucked up family. The other three, though. I mean, again. Yukio tried to... Well, let me see. This is why we forgive St. Germain for being stabby, right? Yukio, what? Threw me off a building. Pushed me in front of a car. Pushed me down a well. Try to set me on fire. Threw me off a cliff. Yeah, that's it. That's a lot of... That's a lot of fucked up right there. But we still forgave him at the end, you know? I really hope. 
Lupin's path isn't like that, is all I'm saying. Because in Amnesia Memories, the most fucked up person was the final path that you unlocked. Like, that was the true path that you're supposed to go down. So, I'm just saying, I can't handle that. Okay? Not after St. Germain's route. Like, I thought that was like, oh my god, that was bad and he was beautiful. But, like, if Lupin turns out to be motherfucking crazy, Spacey can't handle that shit. We'll still love him, but Spacey can't handle that shit. That's all I'm saying. Anyway. You must beware those sweet temptations, mademoiselle. Hmm. <laughs> like you. Lupin's voice is both serious and formal, and I nod meekly in reply. I was joking. You're supposed to laugh. Here comes Impey! I hear the sound of machinery from afar. Maybe those soldiers from last night have found us after all. I stiffen up. Lupin pats me lightly on the shoulder. <laughs> there, there, girl, girl. Down, girl. It's all right. I'm not a dog, Lupin. <laughs> Don't worry, he's with my group. He's just about as annoying as the British soldiers, though. Group? I wonder if whoever is approaching is the same person Lupin had mentioned before. I turn and see the machine draw closer, spewing black smoke and roaring. I remember it from last night. A metal box on wheels, a self-propelled machine... It was called an automobile. No, we called them horseless carriages last night, but that's okay. Same difference. A horseless carriage is probably the most fitting description. There you go. That's better. But that's a sexy car. Not gonna lie. It's pretty It's pretty swank, right? I mean, that's pretty awesome. I mean, great. I gotta turn the crank and like put some steam in <laughs> I mean, you put a V8 engine in that thing. Yeah, it's pretty banging. Drive that. You know. I mean, you die because there's no roof, so as soon as you flip, but, you know, whatever. Still, let's just pretend. It's so fast. Must be a V8. <laughs> it screeches loudly and comes to a stop in front of me. Lupin, hey, you're alive! A man covered in soot and wearing goggles sits in a seat atop the machine. Sorry I'm late. My beloved car wouldn't listen to me. Wait, who's the cutie? Ha! <laughs> you decided against stealing the treasure and went to pick up girls last night? Introduce me, you bastard. <laughs> I love the look on his face like, Oh my god. Dolt. The cutie is the treasure. Say what? The man gets up to leave his seat. Fire bursts out from the machine and a cloud of smoke surrounds us. Lubin quickly jumps in front of me to shield me with his body. When the blast subsides, I peek around Lupin to look at the newcomer. Ugh! Oh, the engine's done it again! Wait, just two minutes, cutie. Your prince will be right there to enact a romantic first encounter. Oh, sweet Jesus. But we've already had a first encounter. <laughs> I fucking love us. Because we don't get it. But it's also like we're being snarky. But it's really just because we don't get it. Like, he's like, I'll be there to reenact a first encounter. You're like, but we've already had one. Like, we're just saying it because we're confused, but it comes out kind of like, yeah, but we've already had one, so put it away. <laughs> it just goes out so bad. Oh, Impe. You poor, poor, horny little bastard. Slightly creepy and pushy, but oh, we love Jadeway. <laughs> I love you! The man shouts in response for some reason before diving underneath his vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> I knew this pipe was a problem. I want to get a new one, but money's tight. All right, good girl. Good, good, good. A short time later, done. All better. The machine releases another huge puff of smoke as he taps it with his wrench. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, she's an unruly one, but she's in tip-top shape once again. Hey, Impe, is this thing really going to get us to London? How rude. This genius engineer says so, and it's got to be true. He stands in the smoke and looks at me. Here we go. I was like, where the hell is our... There we go. There's our first Impe CG that we've already seen. Ah, nice to meet you, cutie. It is I, your very own prince astride a white horse. <laughs> and would be like, but it's black. And it's a car. <laughs> like, we don't get fucking metaphors. 
He raises his goggles and smiles at me with his soot-covered face. Don't mind him. He's not a bad guy. He's just a scatterbrained tinkerer. Excuse me? That's distinguished engineer and great inventor and amazingly good-looking man who knows what's what. Most important. Oh, most. <laughs> I was reading that Lupin's voice. <laughs> most importantly, a man who will one day land on the moon. In Bay Barbicane. Ready, willing, and available. Nice to meet you. I'm Spacey. It's nice to meet you, too. Whoa! Now that I get a closer look at you, you are ridiculously cute. I would swear Venus de Milo escaped from a painting. Venus de Milo is a sculpture. You can't even engineer a proper pickup line. Oh, just call me Impe, Miss Spacey. As he's saying this, he gives me a good long stare, which is creepy. Well, you are a special one. If you desire full service love maintenance, I can provide it. Oh my god! I forgot how fucking creepy he comes off in the very beginning. Let me give you the tune up of a lifetime. Oh my god! I'm so glad we decided to reread this because I forgot all of this. I'm not sure how to deal with him. As Impei wipes his grimy face with a rag, Lupin hits him in the face with a punch. Ow! What was that for, Lupin? Enough chit-chat. Let's get going. Those troops aren't idiots. We shouldn't stay here for too long. It's like, um, I'm hitting you for being a cad. All right, all right. You're a better speaker with your fists, as usual. It's not going to get you any girls, you know. Lies! Liza Minnelli. Because he's my boo this time. Sorry. I only use my fists to speak with people at your level. Oh, good. I guess I don't need to worry, since there's nobody else at my level. Yes, you're on a level all your own. Impe is cheerful, while Lupin sounds annoyed. It's almost as if they're having different conversations. Or a married fest spat. Oh. I'm turning the engine on. Sad that he has to give us a warning. Because, you know, it might explode and shit. What's going on, birdies? What you doing? <laughs> they were just flapping around like weirdos. The machine roars to life and spews another cloud around us. Whoa! She leaking steam again? Come on, darling, you can do it. What can I say? There are lots of strange people in the world. <laughs> and I meet all of them. Literally. After this rough start, the automobile runs smoothly for a while as we ride. As we go along, Lupin explains to Impey our situation and what had happened to us. Hmm. So if I'm hearing this right, Lupin, then you've set yourself up as the hero to this poor soul. I'm so jealous. Trade with me, man. Is that all you heard from this? There was a lot more to that and you should have been... Oh, wait. There was a lot more that you should have been surprised by. The conversation between Lupin and Impey always seemed to go this way. I could tell that they got along quite well. <laughs> they get along quite well. Seriously? Are you a nuts? From time to time, the car screeches and releases a cloud of steam. It seems as if this machine runs on steam power. The books in the mansion described steam engines, and the diagrams of them always included a way to vent waste steam. But this automobile doesn't have one. As it may explain, the Neo steam engine invented by my father allows that energy to be stored without releasing it. That meant that the engine could keep steam without the tedious task of constantly stoking a fire and burning coals. That's as much as I understood from Impey's description. It all seems frightfully complicated. Still, Impey's endless chatter and Lupin's arguing serve to lift my spirits. I love it when you two fight like an old married couple. We pass through fields, towns, and forests as the automobile runs on and on. Although it lets out some steam from time to time, it never breaks down again. According to Lupin, it's something of a miracle that it runs so smoothly. Impey's talk continues like a river, keeping up a stream of conversation. Lupin chimes in occasionally, but I catch him nodding off once or twice. We drove for a long time, but I was never bored during the trip. The sun's now high in the sky. We finish lunch and ride for a few more hours. Lupin, who had been staring into the distance from the passenger seat, suddenly stretches. 
<sighs> it's coming up. And now I have to yawn for real. Sorry. It's late. What is? Once we climb this hill, you'll get your first glimpse of Steel London. A short while later, just as Lupin said, London appears in all its glory. The city that sprawls ahead of us is nothing short of a metropolis. It's far larger than any city that the books I read spoke of. Larger than I could have imagined. It's amazing. Any words used to, used to describe it fall short. A city of steel protected not only by a great wall, but by a ring of turrets. A ring of fire. No, that's London. Isn't it fantastic, Miss Spacey? Even greater surprises await you inside. It has a fully functioning sewer system, and thanks to the gas lamps everywhere, it's bright as noon even in the darkest night. The high-class districts have airship mooring posts everywhere sticking up from the rooftops like trees in a forest. This is London? How did such a huge city come to exist? It wasn't this way until quite recently. It's thanks to Her Majesty Queen Victoria that the city has grown as it has. Don't get us wrong, it started out pretty big. But in only five short years, it's become the massive place it is today. The Queen was probably in a rush to showcase Britain's power by transforming her capital into a massive fortified city. Britain has many enemies on the continent. Taking such an obvious posture like this has likely prevented war across Europe. I continue to look across the great city as I listen to Impe and Lupin. As you can see, a wall divides the city into two regions. The mess of towns, forest, and factories outside is known as Outer London. <laughs> I think we noticed it. It says London. So London's talking. I don't know how to do London's voice. I'm sorry. I don't believe a city has one, so we'll just go with Lupin. Midtown is where London's steam engines are produced. There's some poor areas, and the rich have vacation homes outside. Beyond the wall in the center of the city is central London. That's where politicians, the rich, the powerful, and nobles reside. We live in the forest area of Greater London. We're basically borrowing some space from a certain aristocrat. An aristocrat? I'll introduce you to him later, Spacey. For now, please wait here with Impe. Lupin turns his back on us and gathers his hat and cloak to leave. What's the matter, Lupin? I'm going to scout the area. You're going scouting? Whatever for? There are teams of inspectors along the wall. I'm going to check them out. It's possible they may be looking for Spacey. You can see the wall from here? Remember this, Spacey. It takes good eyes. To be a good thief. How many times have you trod at that old chestnut out? You keep an eye on Lupin, Miss Spacey. You, he'll lecture you to death if you let him. And that's because you refuse to stop being stupid. I'll be back in an hour or so. Just stay alert and be careful. <laughs> I think that's one of my favorites just because I love the way it comes out when I read it. Like, that's because you refuse to stop being stupid. I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> I just fucking love it. <laughs> I could say that line all damn day. Oh, God. One more time. That's because you refuse to stop being stupid. Anyway, okay. I'll be back in an hour or so. Just stay alert and be careful. Watcha. Like, he's supposed to have a British accent when he says that, so it sounds really stupid when we say it without one, but... See you later. I just really actually want to replace certain scenes of this with the voice acting on so we can hear it, because I just think it'd be really funny to hear Watcha in a Japanese accent. Because I just have a feeling it's going to come out even weirder than me saying it. Like... That's gotta be amazing. Anyway, Lupin waves to us and leaves. Alone at last, Miss Spacey. I nod, watching Lupin's receding back, getting smaller in the distance. Oh, come back, Lupin! For some reason, I suddenly feel lonely. Oh, dear. Why don't we discuss something interesting? Like the newest model steam engines that were on display at the London World Expo. It achieved 700 horsepower using 450... Two-inch cylinders. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, because that's just a load of crap. 700 horsepower on my fucking ass. Like, 
Wait, oh, wait, are we talking about locomotives? Because maybe. I'm like thinking about a car. I, wait, what did he say? Steam engines. Okay, I'm assuming when you say steam engines, you mean like a fucking, like a train steam engine. That I believe. When I hear steam engine, I'm thinking like engine, car engine. No, sorry. Nah. Like, damn. Um, you know, steam engine like locomotive. Yes, I believe that. Okay. The design is also light and compact, since science is so beautiful, right? I'm just gonna- Whoa! Got a little close there! Impey suddenly reaches out as if to stroke my cheek with his hand. I flinch back. If you touch my skin, you'll melt! <laughs> also, he just reaches out to touch us. How fucking creepy is that? Back the fuck off, dude! I know! I know we go down his path and it actually turns out not bad and it's actually sweet and kind of cute, but this is a little creep level. Like, I can't help it. Well, that's right. You, you're so beautiful, I forgot. It's true what they say. All the greatest roses have the sharpest thorns. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking bite you. That's how sharp my thorns are. Like, I will poke you in the eye. Back the fuck off, dude. Impey, there's something I'd like you to tell me. What kind of person is Lupin? You want to know about Lupin? What about me? Why don't I tell you about my hobbies? Oh, dear God. I don't understand. Lupin saved me. I don't know why. That's what I'd like to know. Well, I'm impressed that you could blow me off so casually. That's great, Spacey. Yeah, I can get into the frigid beauty thing. <laughs> I like when he gets all stunned and they make him like a fucking cartoon. Like, with the fucking cartoon. Like, I just... <laughs> hey, I'm kidding! I'll tell you, these cold eyes of yours will make me cry. Stop looking at me like that. Stop being creepy. Like, look! He's adorable. He's pretty. Don't get me wrong. But then he's like, huh, I'm just gonna touch you, and I'm creepy. And, huh, I'll, I'll, I'll fix you up. Huh. Clean out your pipes. Gross! Dude, fucking A. What the fuck? Dude! No! I want romancy, not fucking stalker creep. Look, if I wanted back alley rape, I'd go to some other fucking visual novel game. That's not what I'm here for. Let's simmer down the creep level. It's not gonna happen, it's Impey. They make him creepy to make everybody else seem better. They really do. And I don't like that, because, like, he could be such a... He's actually a good character. He's a good person. It's just... Tone down the creepiness. Tone down the creepy vibe. That's it. That's all I'm asking, Impey. It's okay. St. Germain tried to stab us, but I, he's still above Impey on my list because the pushiness and the hitting on over, overly hitting on is just, there's a line there and I'm like, nope, I don't like that. That's weird. It's creepy. I don't like it. Oh, he's cute and sad though. And now I feel bad. He feels sad. Anyway, <laughs> I'm like, oh, but now I feel bad. He's looking at me all sad. Lupin didn't say anything? Uh, I suppose he didn't want to confuse you by telling you everything all at once. All right, as a gift to commemorate our new friendship, allow me to enlighten you. See, that's okay. See, that I don't mind. It's okay. That man is more or less a hero. Is that so? Yeah, he's too embarrassed to admit it himself. Now, Isaac created a special task force known as Twilight. Someone else runs it now. You were captured by a British army squad, but it was supposed to have been soldiers from Twilight on that mission. But the plans got changed somewhere, and those guys came instead. That's good for us, because Twilight has the elite forces. <laughs> we'll find out later when we move. I'm saying. Oops. If he'd had to rescue you from a Twilight squad, he may have been in some real danger. We got lucky, that's all. According to Lupin, Twilight is planning some kind of massive terrorist attack. And the first step in executing that plan is getting their hands on that gem in your chest. The Horologium, isn't it? The stone? I raise my hands to my chest protectively. It's a good thing you don't take your shirt off in front of him, because he'd have just burned his hands off, because he'd just grab you before he thought about it. Because, you know, it's Impey. He's pervy. It's all just hearsay, but once Lupin heard about that, he decided to do whatever he can to stop it. That's why he's looking for Isaac, the man behind their whole operation, and why he saved you. See? Isn't that heroic? Even for a thief. I see. Lupin himself said that he saved me because he was a thief with the heart of justice. 
Just knowing all this makes me very happy. So, Lupin's not a bad man. Hey now! Oh, that's Lupin. Hey now! Did you think I was evil? I turned, startled to see Lupin behind me. It sounds like you've told her everything. Well, that's the long and short of it. It was probably someone with power in the government who gave the order to abduct you. Of course, government official or not, I have no intention of giving you up. I'm sorry to involve you in this. Truly, I am. I shake my head at Lupin's words. I can't find the right words to say it, but meeting you, I think it was a good thing. I see. That's good. Um, I'm sitting right here. Oh, and Lupin? Again with the ignoring me! I want to know about my father, too. There's so much I need to ask him. Why, why I was left alone in that mansion? Why I have no memories? If he can make this poison go away... Why did he make me a monster? Or why did he make me a monster? I need to ask him face to face. Then our goals align. Let's make our partnership official. Lupin holds out his right hand. The second handshake. I shake his hand without hesitation. Partners, right? Put her there, Miss Spacey. Impey firmly grasps my other hand. His smile is the brightest I've ever seen. Dun, 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 dun. This is the official music. Now we're on official business. Back to business. I scouted out the checkpoint. Take a look at this. Oh, <laughs> how they put the glasses and they make him look like kind of shady. Like, because you can't see his eyeballs, you just see the glasses and he looks like so serious. You're like, but he's so adorable. But they make him look shady. Lupin pulls out, pulls some papers from his jacket. Wanted crimes against the state. Victor Frankenstein? Frankenstein. It's Igor, sir. Sorry. Can't help it. Let me see. Vicious terrorist wanted for the bombing of the West River factory, killing 12. Shh, Bird, what are you screaming at? Stop. Yikes. That's one dangerous man. He was formerly a royal alchemist and a leading researcher. One of the best. His career is ruined now. The picture on the wanted poster is of a kind-looking young man with glasses. He doesn't look vicious at all. It doesn't pay to judge a book by its cover. So, what's so interesting about this poster? The extra security on the checkpoints is to catch this man. It has nothing to do with us, but we should still be careful. Makes sense. We are a couple of kidnappers on the run right now. I'm sorry to cause you trouble. He, that's a, they kidnapped me, and I'm like, I'm sorry. Wait. Also, we're here willingly, so it's not really kidnap at this point. You needn't apologize, mademoiselle. Doing this was our decision. <laughs> I mean, also, I'm here against my will. Well, I'm okay with this, but you kidnapped me. I shouldn't be apologizing to you for that. Y yeah, don't worry about us, Miss Spacey. Well, then, would it be better if we stayed out of London until things cooled down a bit? No, London is overflowing with people. Once we're inside, we'll be hard to find. We're better off entering the city quickly. Then what do we do? They don't have any pictures of us, and those men last night were from the Royal Guard. And they wouldn't be manning checkpoints. We'll pass through easily if we falsify our identities. Impey and I nod along with Lupin's plan. Sure! How are we going to do that? They give me a map of the mansion and a map to the mansion in case something happens to separate us and I have to go alone. To be even more cautious, in order to avoid the three of us being captured together, we decide to split into two groups. Ideally, you should accompany Impey, who has no connections with them. But I'm not all too sure about him. Hey! You have to start trusting your teammates more. Very well. Spacey, you can choose who to go with. You'll let me decide? Who should I have accompany me? Oh, you know what I like? Because I knew I knew that this choice was coming up where it said, and I figured it was going to be here when it said go with Lupin, because then we never had this choice. But I like the fact that they mark it as go with Impey that we chose that, because that's originally the first time around it forced us. You should go with him. 
because I was curious. I'm like, if this comes up and it acts like we haven't chosen, I'm going to guarantee saying go with Impey would be exactly what we already went through. And then he fucks up. Oh, you're supposed to be my wife. What? I don't know. He, what? I just met you. And like, you know, we screw it up because we're not really good with this shit. So I like this. I like the fact that it actually kind of registered go with Impey as like, it's not really a choice. You didn't have a choice, but it counts as the choice. We don't have to go through that whole thing again to see all of the scenes. So we're going to go with Lupin because that's what we're supposed to do. And it's Lupin's path. And fuck yeah. And we already chose the other option. So a sensible choice. After all, between myself and Impey, is there ever any contest who's the better man? Still right here. How badly do you think of me anyway? I just love when people insult him and he's like, I'm right here. And they keep going, I'm still here. I can hear you. You do this to yourself, Impey. You've kept me safe so far, Lupin. Don't give up on me yet, Miss Spacey. Oh, I didn't... I can't give up on something I never started. Just saying. And so, Lupin and I part ways from the pouting Impey and head towards the checkpoint. We approach a huge gate. Beyond it, I see many buildings. The gate is crowded with people, and, I, and a line is waiting to get through the checkpoint. We join the long line. Finally, it's our turn. I'm a little nervous. Leave it to me. You just have to say what we practiced earlier. <clears throat> la 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 la. <laughs> what are you doing, Lupin? <laughs> la. <laughs> Sorry. Next. It's our turn. Lupin confidently takes my hand and walks up to the guard. You two together? State your names, please. State my name? Who are you to order me about? Is that how you speak to nobility? Uh, nobility? Are you an aristocrat, sir? Indeed I am. The guards bow their heads at Lupin's voice. You've made us wait in this interminable line, and now this shoddy treatment? I am not having a happy day. Y yes sir, sorry sir, but we do have rules. May I have your name, please, sir? If you must. <laughs> Gilford Dudley, I'm sorry. If you must, I am Baron Gilford Dudley. This is my wife, Jane. Isn't that so, Jane? This is all as we had practiced. Y yes, dear, that's right. How, uh, how dare you, you, um. You seem very nervous, madam. How dare you speak to my wife in that tone? Sorry, sir, I meant nothing. I mean, that's right, oh, this makes me nervous. I am. I'm not used to being out. I'm ill. Look. <laughs> Sir, if I may, do you have any proof of your identity on your person? This was not something we had practiced. I look at Lupin in a panic. However, with a calm expression, Lupin draws a dagger from within his coat. This dagger bears our family crest. This is indeed the Dudley coat of arms. P pardon me, Baron and Lady Dudley. Please pass through. The guard bows low as Lupin strides through. I hurry along behind him. So, our little infiltration was a success. Spacey, welcome to London. I know, I, like, I'm expecting her expression to be like, blink, 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 blink. Oh, what the fuck just happened? That's because that's awesome. What's this? Aren't you impressed? I expected that you would be more taken aback since this is your first time here. My heart is still pounding from the guard. I thought we would get caught. <laughs> Don't be foolish. I'm the most thoroughly prepared person there ever was. Failure is not in my repertoire. Besides, if you tell a lie with enough confidence, no one will dare to doubt it. What would you have done if we did get caught? I have other methods prepared. I can distract them or lose them in smoke. Always have backup plans for your backup plans. That's how a gentleman thief operates. God, I fucking love his cocky attitude. I nod, impressed. Mm, yeah. I have finally calmed down enough to observe my surroundings. The buildings are so tall. The streets are so full of people. Chimneys rise up from the roofs and spill black smoke into the sky. Off in the distance, I see high-rising towers that seem to pierce the heavens. This view is simply overwhelming. I had never seen anything like this before. According to Lupin, this area was a middle-class part of the city. 
It's mainly an industrial portion, and the factories produce steam that gets used all throughout the city all day long. <laughs> Is this all new to you? Yes, it's fascinating. I could look at it forever. Forever would be a problem, but we can take the scenic route, and I'll show you something even more amazing. <laughs> I don't even need the context. I'm happy without context because that was just amazing. No! I bet you will show me something amazing. Oh, that's not what you're talking about. Okay, whatever. But this is already so entrancing. What could be even better? Thank God that wasn't... If Impey said it, I'd be like, put it away! And Lupin says it, and you're like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Even though he's not being pervy about it, so that's the funny way. <laughs> just follow me. You're going to be surprised. It's also the way I say it when I read it in his voice. I know. He and I walk together for a ways. Soon we come to a large bridge. It's so big. <laughs> that's just, that's just, I'll show you something even more amazing. And then you go to this and just without anything in between, without this background, without context, that is just so wrong. Oh god, I can't play this game anymore. <laughs> Spacey's lost her fucking marbles. I should read this after I've been drinking. It'd be so much more fun. I don't know if I could read properly, but oh my god, I would just I would literally fall off my bouncy ball onto the floor because I would not be able to handle it. I'm not drunk and I can't I haven't had anything to drink and I already certain things are like context phrasing. We need to be careful with this and Oh dear God, my mind is already in the gutter. This is Tower Bridge. London Bridge is probably more famous, but this one is about the same size and construction. It was made during the Great London Reconstruction for traffic expansion. When a large ship comes, it raises. This huge thing moves? <laughs> they use hydraulic power or something. Uh, ask him about the details. He loves mechanisms like this. I nod, impressed, and turn to the bridge. The river is so big. That's the Thames. It connects London to the ocean and is the biggest waterway entrance to Britain. Look! Ah! A new glossary term! You know, because we don't get them at all. We don't get the other ones because we already read them, so yay! River Thames. A major waterway flowing through London with numerous bridges and tunnels crossing it. Oh. Oh, wait. That's Lupin. I thought it was me. Oh, I... Wait. Oh, I'd love to watch as you stare at things in shock. But we should save the sightseeing for another time. Not even going to comment about the staring at things in shock. Well, I just did. Anyway. I'm sure you're tired after all you've been through. Let's get some rest. All right, let's go. Oh, But okay. We walk through the city... As we... Oh, we walk through the city. Lupin explaining things as we moved along. But our trip to the mansion does not go so smoothly. While I'm preoccupied with steam-powered locomotive passing by, somehow I lose sight of Lupin. Oh, of course. He's not here. Not over there, either. So this is back where we... So normally we would have gotten lost from Impey, and this is where we meet Victor. So I look for the man I had been traveling with, but I can't find him. Ah, see? Okay. So I think when I first did it... When we got separated from Impey, right? And we're like, I look for the man I've been traveling with. I'm like, why don't you just fucking say Impey? Why do you say the man? Because this is exactly the same whether you were traveling with Impey or Lupin. But we didn't know we had that choice. You know what I mean? Like, until now. So, if I take too long, the sun will set. What should I do? There isn't much that I can do. I need to make my own way to the mansion. He might already be waiting for me there. Excuse me, are you looking for someone? Someone calls out to me. Perhaps I could be of assistance. That would be very kind of you. I bow to the helpful man. Who are you looking for? A man with short hair, dressed like a gentleman. He is a thief. That's probably stupid to say. Oh, short hair, dressed like a gentleman. Oh, yeah, no, that doesn't describe like 90%. You know, brown hair, top hat, pretty dashing, a little cocky. Gold eyes. <laughs> the snarky little smile, and he says things quite amusingly. <laughs> little flair for the dramatic. You know, I mean, come on, we could do better. 
A thief? Well, I don't know if he's who you're looking for, but I saw someone resembling that earlier. Would you like me to take you to him? That would be wonderful. Please do. My pleasure. This way, please. The man starts walking ahead of me, and I follow along. Actually, since I know that this man is going to lead us in place, I should have been like, Can I help you? Follow me. I can show you who you're looking for. Make him sound extremely creepy. So like, oh, sure, you sound like someone nice we should trust. That's what I should have done, but I didn't. Spacey ruined it. I continue to follow him into an alley. There's no one else around, and the street here is covered in filth. What would he be doing here? So and then I'm sure that line we describe Impe, you know, whatever. Excuse me, but where is he? Just a little further, so if you would. Thank you, you're so kind. No, oh, it's no problem. We continue to walk even further. I can't even hear the street noise now. The man turns to face me. This is it. This is where I saw him. There's no one here. Come on out, fellows. It brought us a real catch. She's a fine specimen. She'll be worth a lot, that's for sure. Ew, creepy. You're gonna sell me to like some kind of like creepy sleep den. Ew, gross. Well, I mean, you go right ahead, buddy. You're gonna have a nasty ass fucking surprise if you try that shit. I'm just saying. Two men appear from the shadows behind him. They must be friends of the kind man. Dude. Read the room, Spacey. Or, I'm sorry, read the creepy dark alley, Spacey. Read the creepy dark alley. Worth a lot. What are you talking about? We're talking about you, my dear. The man reaches out to me. With fear and memory bursting through me, I back away. Don't touch me! <laughs> oh, this is nice. Very, very nice. Hmm. The, the men draw closer, and I try to back up. Soon my back hits the wall. I don't know what these men intend to do, but it's surely something I won't welcome. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere to run. I start to panic and look around. There's no use shouting. Nobody around here is going to help you. The man reaches out again and I flinch. He grabs my shirt and tries to rip it open. No! Don't touch me! Ah, your skin is so smooth! Your hand! Look! Smoke is rising from the skin of the man who had touched me. It's hot! Yeah, I am. Oh, I'm also your hand because it's melting. Yeah, I just told you not to touch me, asshole. He starts to scream and roll on the ground, clutching his hand as a burning odor begins to fill the area. Well, what's happening? What trick is this? I don't know, but watch her. She's not what she seems. Ah! She started burning me the moment I touched her! Witch! Monster! Yeah, just leap to that, asshole. Maybe it's God telling you to not stop being handsy. Jesus, you know? I mean, God, people. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I told you not to touch me! The other two men pull out knives and slowly approach me. Oh, like, that's gonna hurt. Whatever. There's no escape. I wonder if the knives would melt if they touched me, and if they would still hurt. Die! The man raises his knife high. Close your eyes and cover your ears! I hear a voice shout, and something lands on the ground between myself and the man. There's a burst of intense light and a sound when the object hits the ground. I had quickly covered my eyes and ears as instructed, but the intensity still makes me dizzy for a moment. I lose my balance and fall over, but oddly I fail to hit the ground. You're all right now. Open your eyes, slowly. Oh, oh Victor. My precious Victor. Oh, sweetie, you're adorable. Thanks so much. Look, at he's holding our hand. That's so sweet. I open my eyes. Someone is holding me. You don't need to fear me. I'm not going to do anything to you. You're safe. Thank you for saving me. Who are you? I'm afraid I can't tell you that. You still look a little pale. What happened to those men? They're all knocked out. Are they dead? No, just unconscious. When the senses receive extreme stimulation, the mind shuts off for a while in reaction. Good. <laughs> You're very compassionate to worry about men who are attacking you. Though, I have to admit, that gem... Uh, excuse me. It's rude of me to stare at a woman's chest, but jeweled or no, I mean no disrespect. He gently releases me. This is no place for a girl like you. It's not safe here. 
Besides, you must always be suspicious of strangers, especially in places like this. I see. I'll escort you back to the main street. We don't want anything to happen to you. Thank you, but can I trust you? You're a stranger too. Oh, yes, well, um, perhaps you can make an exception in my case. Aw, I will because you're adorable. He starts walking back up the alley, and I follow along, fixing my clothing. His face seems so familiar. After we walk for a while, I hear the city. Well then, I think you'll be safe out here. Do be careful. All right. By the way, I'd like to ask you... Damn, where'd he go? He's gotta be hiding around here somewhere. Search carefully. I stiffen in reaction to the angry shouting coming towards us. Could they be more of the men who had tried to kidnap me? No, they're already this close. They're faster than I anticipated. What? Where is he? Frankenstein, I know you're here somewhere! The name shocks me into recognition, and I stare up at the man with me. I remember now. You're the wanted man! <laughs> Yes, you have me pegged. I'm the criminal Victor Frankenstein. He's so fucking adorable about it. <laughs> he laughs without humor, then narrows his eyes behind his glasses. You're being followed. What are you talking about? This way. Frankenstein suddenly takes my hand and begins running. W wait, Mr. Frankenstein, what do you mean I'm being followed? Aren't you the one being chased? Just call me Victor. Of course I'm being pursued, but someone seems to be after you as well. Pursued by the police? No, the yard is only after me. You're being followed by a different, much scarier group. Who? Twilight. Twilight. I know it is fucking scary. That was some seriously terrible writing, I'm just saying. Twilight, the novels, not this game. This game is awesome. Twilight, the novels sucked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you liked it. I'm not sorry, though. Seriously. That was terrible. Victor doesn't respond to any more of my questions, and we continue running. It's just terrible. After we have to run through the maze like Warren of Alleyways, he finally comes to a stop. <sighs> I wonder if we've lost them. Victor, are you all right? Fine, but... Impressive. You're not out of breath at all. That must be the power of that gem at work. The gem? Oh, I mean... It's nothing, don't worry about it. Victor, are you really the same Victor Frankenstein as on the wanted posters? Yes, that's my name, no doubt about it. But I swear, I've committed no crime. I doubt that you'd believe me, since we only just met. But I'm innocent. I didn't do anything. There are people who want to have me painted as a criminal. Who would want to do that? The British government. They want to... Victor abruptly stops talking. He looks behind me, eyes round in surprise. What's the matter? Watch out! Victor suddenly pushes me down. At the same time, I hear a strange noise. I turn behind me to look and see a man wearing a bizarre bird-like mask pointing a blade straight at me. I take it you're Spacey. What? Duck! No, Spacey. As the man raises his sword again, Victor throws a glass tube full of liquid. I feel a blast of heat and hear a muffled sound. It's probably the same thing he used to save me earlier. However, the masked man jumps away quickly to avoid the explosion. Victor takes my hand and throws two more tubes at the other man. Explosions go off, one after another. Through the rising black smoke, I see the mysterious man on the ground. Here, here's my thing, though. How did the cops not find him faster? They're really fucking terrible, Scotland Yard. This is why they had to get Herlock Sholmes, is all I'm saying. Because he's throwing bombs down an alley, and then they're like, he's gotta be here somewhere. You didn't think to maybe follow the explosions? And, like, right now, they're not like, hey, there's some explosions going on. We should probably follow that shit. I mean, or are they like, whatever, criminals are doing weird shit, we gotta look for Frankenstein, and they just don't seem to, like, cop, don't wanna, hello? Hello? I know you're on the track of a wanted criminal, but maybe you should check out the explosions, is all I'm saying, and then happen to find us. I mean, it's good for us that the cops are inept, but still, just saying. We'd better run while we can. 
There'll be others here soon. We've got to get away from here. Victor begins running, and I follow. I continue to chase after him until we arrive at a large street. Compared to the impoverished area, this place is much cleaner and better organized. It's probably a street in Midtown, like Lupin explained to me. <sighs> Ooh, we should be safe here in public. They shouldn't come after us now. Victor, are you all right? No, I'm, I'm just a little out of shape. I'm an academic, so I'm not used to heavy physical exertion. Victor catches his breath and looks at me. Anyway, I'm glad no one got hurt, and we managed to get away. I nod in agreement. Thank you for saving me. Twice. There's no need to thank me. I acted of my own accord. But I am curious. Aren't you going to try to flee me? Why would I run from you now? Why? Because I'm a wanted criminal. Wouldn't it be natural to scream and shout or go running to the police? Should I? N no, no! It's nothing like that at all! You're a good person who saved me, and I'm on the run as well. Victor smiles a little. I, I see. Allow me to formally introduce myself. My name is Victor Frankenstein. I used to be a government alchemist. I know, I read the poster. It said that you were behind a terrorist attack on a factory. I've been falsely accused. I didn't do it. I know you have no reason to believe me right away, but I believe you. What? It's wrong not to trust someone who's, who's risked his own safety to save me not once, but twice. Thank you. I'm glad someone believes me. I'm the one who should be thanking you. I never introduced myself either. I'm Spacey. I give him a short introduction of my origins and my reasons for being in London. Unlimited energy. Horologium. Is that gem underneath your skin? That's what Lupin said. Lupin. But I see. Victor appears to think something over, then looks right at me. Spacey, I have a suggestion. I would like you to let me examine your body. Why? Do you want to see me naked? What? what? N no, I mean, examine it as a doctor. I see. I do practice medicine, and I have knowledge of chemistry and alchemy. I believe I can be of help to you. I'd like you to at least let me try. I can see in his eyes that he's not lying, but... We're supposed to remain defensive, I think, for Lupin's path, which is really sad because I don't want to, but we have to, and we've already done both, so. I'm sorry. Of course, we've only just met, and I'm sure that I must seem extremely suspicious to you. I still don't know you well enough. I don't know what Lupin and the others will think. W well, then, I'd like to meet this Lupin fellow and explain the situation to him. And if he agrees, do you think it would be acceptable? Probably not. All right, if that's what happens, then I won't object. Come with me, Victor. I do have one question, though. Why are you going through so much trouble to help me? Oh, it's because I think you can help me with something, too. I can? Yes, I've been on the run for quite some time now. It's only a matter of time before they catch me. I'd like you to let me hide out at this Lupin's mansion, if possible. He gives me a plaintive look. I think for a while before I speak. It's not my home, so it isn't my place to decide anything like that. I'll ask Lupin. I think he'll say yes. Because he's a hero. This man, you really do trust him. I feel a tickle in my chest like a butterfly and take a paper from my pocket. Victor asks what it is, and I tell him that it's a map. Lupin gave me this so I could find my way there in case we were separated. W what is it, Spacey? I don't know where we are now, though. Let me see. Hmm. According to the map, we should go down this street. Victor and I walk along the street together, the moonlight shining through the leaves of the trees. It's funny to me to see forests and hills enclosed within the city's walls. This is a very nice area. The more wealthy people have their estates and vacation homes here. Is this Lupin from Nobility? I don't know much about him myself, but one thing that I do know is that Lupin is a thief with a heart of justice. A thief? But he believes in justice. Even though he steals for a living. Yes. 
Indeed. Hmm. Victor tilts his head to the side as if in thought. Yeah, he's like, hmm. Right? Because that's what we all do. Huh. Sure, Lupin. We love you anyway. Uh, as if in thought and continues walking. Then, without warning, the forest clears, revealing a huge mansion standing before us. Not the reverse mansion! That's where the bad shit happens! Wow, that's a very fine building. This is it, according to the map. I'm not too sure myself. I look up at the mansion in awe as Victor double-checks the map. Well, this seems to be the right place. The lights are on. Shall we give it a try? Victor starts toward the door, but I stop in my tracks and look down at my feet. What's the matter? They're probably going to be worried. I caused them trouble, and I don't know how I'm going to face them. I see. All the more reason to show them that you're fine, so they'll stop worrying. They're all likely waiting for you. Victor's right, all, both. I nod and push open the gate to enter, uh, to enter the gardens surrounding the mansion. We walk towards the looming main building. I take a deep breath and knock on the door. There's no response. I try again. Again, no reaction. No matter how much I knock, nobody answers the door. I push on it lightly and the door swings open with a creak. Dude, there's not even a doorknob. They just push the door open. Huh, it's open. That seems a bit careless. Wait, something's wrong. I'll go ahead. You follow me. Yeah, they're waiting to ambush. <laughs> you, you should have known that. I mean, we know this. They're going to ambush him. Like, what are you doing with our spacey? It's great. He pushes the door open and we can see inside into a huge foyer. I do like that in reverse mansion, everything literally is reversed. I was like, oh, look, you can see the other side of the stairs, which I would think that this probably does have stairs on both sides, but it was really just that the whole thing was fucking like a flip, just so we would know that we were in reverse mansion, and this is where all the crazy shit went down. <laughs> see? When you're in reverse mansion, St. Germain is stabby. When you're in normal mansion, St. Germain is fine. Never go to reverse mansion. Incredible. This Lupin must be a man of considerable means. Victor takes a step into the hall. At that moment... Don't move! Lupin and Impe stand to either side of Victor, looking ready to attack. And he's like, oh, hmm, this is a rough welcome. Quiet. You are that wanted terrorist, Frankenstein. What have you done to her? Choose your answer carefully. Wait, was that Lupin that I read? Okay, it was. I was, expect uh, I was expecting Impe to talk next. And then it was like Lupin again. And I was like, wait, did I read Impe as Lupin? Anyway. Choose your answer carefully, or you won't be happy with how we react. Did you do anything with her? You lucky son of a... I mean, you bastard! Um, no. First, you're going to return our precious stolen treasure. What exactly did you two do? Don't spare any details, damn it! Fucking Impe, such an asshole. Let me explain. Don't worry, Spacey. I'll make sure to comfort you tonight. In bed, of course. Um, do I still have to keep my hands in the air now? You'll keep your hands up until I say otherwise. Impe, shut up. Listen to me! Lupin, Impe, and Victor all look at me in surprise at my sudden outburst. Having to shout like that was a little embarrassing, but I clear my throat. Victor is... All he did was save me. I see. So he didn't drag you here by force or anything like that? I nod. See here, Frankenstein. If you lay one finger on my girl... Oh, that was Impe. Oh, it was so many... I was like, wait a minute. Why would Lupin have said that? Damn it. Oh, man. See here, Frankenstein. If you lay one finger on my girl, you'll be in a world of... Wow! Wow! The hell did you hit me for, Lupin? What if you were to damage my genius mind? Don't worry. I don't think it could get... I don't think it could get any more damage than it already is. Would you two mind telling us what happened? I'm sorry you were worried about me. Impe and Lupin take a breath to speak, but I keep talking before they can interrupt. This man is the wanted criminal, Victor Frankenstein, but he also saved my life. I explain how I met Victor and give them a summary of the events that happened to us. 
Of course, I also made sure to tell them that Victor was innocent of the attack that he was blamed for on the posters. And Victor wants us to use wants to use this place to hide for a while in exchange for searching for a way to help me with my poison. More than that, I'm willing to help you in anything you need me to do. You'll have my full cooperation. The former royal alchemist and a leading researcher. You're the best this nation has to offer regarding alchemy. Fine. I think we'll have some use for you. I'm Arsene Lupin, greatest thief of the 19th century. Take good care of her. It's a pleasure to meet you. And I'm Impey Barbican. One day I'll go to the moon. Good to meet you. And by the way, Vicky, can you really do something about her poison? Impey leans close to Victor and pokes him in the chest with his finger. I'll try my best. Great! I'm counting on you. This is fantastic, Miss Spacey. We'll finally be able to consummate our love. What? I'm sorry, but even if we were to rid my body of this poison, I have no intention of consummating anything. Maybe not today, but there's always tomorrow. It's all right. Never give up. Never surrender. Nothing about this strikes me as all right at all. Then will you allow me to hide out in this place? Sure, why not? <gasps> Only if the owner of this mansion were to agree to it, of course. You must be tired, am I right? I can't do anything to elaborate, but why don't we have a quick meal? You can cook, Impey? Of course I do. Just leave it to me. I'm as fantastic an engineer in the kitchen as I am in the workshop. I guarantee you'll enjoy it, even though he's scatterbrained about everything else. I'm top-notch in everything I do. You're just jealous of my skill, Lupin. Sure, whatever. Let's get going, Miss Spacey. The living room is back there. Lupin and Impey start walking away. Your friends are an interesting bunch. Friends? Aren't they? Yes, they are. Let's go. I guess I don't know what friends are. I have never heard of friends. I am the, I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. I don't know what that means. Friends. I slowly walk after Lupin and Impey. I should be tired after all that's happened, but I feel lighthearted. Oh, no! It's been an hour, so we're going to stop at this part right here. Now that we've gotten in, and this is a good place um, to boop, boop, pause, and, you know, start the next part. So I will wrap this part up here. I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.